and tell him that you're a scientist too, and he's not. Hi, I'm Anne-Marie Maffedon, co-founder and CEO at STEMETS, which is inspiring, encouraging and supporting girls and young women into science, technology, engineering and maths careers. And I am a woman in tech. So a typical day when I'm in the office, um, I normally have calls in the morning um, and get on with work and then we have writing or things to pull together um, and in the afternoon I might have meetings out in the city um, or I have people that come and film and, and come and take photos in the office um, and I normally end the day actually at evening events so dinners and speaking engagements and all that kind of stuff. So the Stemets are a group of girls and young women who have a passing interest in STEM, STEM being science, technology, engineering and maths, and want to enjoy all of what's on offer and explore what the possibilities are. They're typically aged between 5 and 21, a young person who hasn't started working yet, and they've been along to one of our events or have aspirations to be part of the gang. What inspired me to set up STEMETS uh, were two things that I learned at a conference that I attended back in 2012. Firstly, that I was a woman in tech, because up until that point I hadn't realised, even though I'd always loved the tech and always been a girl, I never knew that was a thing together or even weird in any way. Um, and that was the second point actually that I learned, that being a girl or a woman in tech meant that I was part of the shrinking minority, um, which for me didn't sit right personally, but also economically doesn't make any sense. So I think the biggest barrier for girls and women for getting into STEM is the social norms around being a technical woman or a technical female, I maybe don't like that word, but you know, they say you can't be what you can't see. And often the stories of technical women, whether fictional or non-fictional, aren't told. And so it's really hard to, to have that as an aspiration. What surprises me the most about STEM is how hard people think it is to get involved and to get stuck in. I think there's an artificially high barrier to entry that when you compound it with imposter syndrome means that a lot of women who should consider themselves or should feel free to consider themselves women in tech don't. For me, you don't have to be a software developer or a coder to be a woman in tech. But, I mean, people think that they have to literally have like discovered something new to consider, them, or to consider themselves a woman in tech, whereas often, you are creating using technology, and that's all it takes. To be honest, actually, we have this conversation quite a lot with loads of our role models, where we'll meet them and they'll say, I don't know if I'm women in tech, but I'm working on this thing, and techie, 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 and you're like, yeah, all your techie, 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 means you're a woman in tech, so why don't we start this again? You just say, I am a woman in tech, and I do all this stuff. So personally, the, the best thing for me about working in STEM and about enjoying STEM and where my joy in STEM has always come from has been, I'm an incredibly creative person. And for me, it still blows my mind that I might write, I might have created the STEMETS website. And when people want to research STEMETS, they search, type STEMETS into Google, that site comes up and they read it and they see what I've left there without me being there holding the characters up to their screen or being like, someone's just logged in from the Philippines. I must put the text there. So for me, it's always been something I've, I've loved. So my advice to anyone, girl, woman, or otherwise wanting to get into the tech industry that doesn't feel like they have the right skills or background, my advice to you is to find a tribe and get involved. Technology is incredibly social. There are so many groups, women's and otherwise, for you to get involved with, go along to, and learn from others. Um, Technology is always evolving, so you have to kind of be tapped into a community of some sort. And whether that's a physical community and physical meetup group, or whether that's a virtual one on the chat boards and the forums, go find others, um, and you'll find that it is an incredibly social place and they will want to help and, and if you ever find yourself feeling like an outsider in a, in a group, go and find another one. Are we, so are we done now or...? No, just okay. one more thing. Yeah, Let's sure. This. Let's see. My name is Hannah and I'm 10 years old. My question is, were there any boys that ever told you girls can't be scientists? If so, how did it make you feel? Were there any boys that told me that girls can't be scientists? Do you know, 
I don't think they were. And if they would have, I would have, it would have made me feel like there was something wrong with that boy. <laughs> Why can't girls be scientists? Hi, my name is Atara and I am 10 years old. Do you think it's easier for girls now to get into science, math and technology careers? Do I think it's easier for girls now? Yeah, definitely easier. Um, there's a lady that we talk about all the time called uh, Marie-Sophie Germain, who was a French mathematician back in the 1700s, I believe. And she had to apply to university and she had to attend university pretending she was a man. So she had to write under a man's name um, just so she could get involved. And you don't have to do that now. You can go as yourself, which is great. So you should definitely go to university and do maths as yourself. Hi, my name is Karima. I am 10 years old and my question is, if a boy says that girls can't be scientists or mathematicians, what should I say back to them? You should tell him he needs to get his facts straight. Because <laughs> they can and there's loads of them and you should tell him about um, Ad, uh, Maggie Adderin Pocock, tell him uh, who's a space scientist, tell him about um, Helen Sherman, who was the first Brit ever to go up into space and she's a chemist, and they're alive, you should tell him about all kinds of women. There's lots and lots of women, and tell him to get his facts straight, basically. And tell him that you're a scientist too, and he's not. Hi, my name is Ariola. I'm 10 years old, and my question is, were you always interested in maths and IT? Um, yeah, for as long as I can remember, I've always been interested in maths and IT. And um, what I've always, what I initially liked about maths was how logical it was and how today two times two is four and tomorrow two times two will be four, which means that you kind of just know how things are and how they work and you can make things work like that. Um, and with IT, I've always loved the creativity thing, like I said earlier. Um, I think what's funny is in life, not everything is a maths equation. <laughs> so if someone comes to the office and they're happy yesterday, they might not come and be happy today. So that's a little bit harder. Life's a little bit harder than maths, uh, sadly. But you're 10, so it'll be all right. You've got time to, to work it out. Hi, my name is Zenia. I am 10 years old. And my question is, why does the world need more women to get a job involving maths and science? So the world needs more women to get a job involved in maths and science because there are lots of women and other people in the world who have lots of problems and maths and science is one of those ways that we can solve those problems. And when we don't have women doing them, bad things happen. For example, the first seat belts and airbags killed women and children because the teams that had built them only thought about men and so built them for men. And as you'll know, men tend to be taller and heavier than women and children. And so those seatbelts killed them. And we don't want that with our new seatbelts or our new driverless cars or any of the new stuff. So that's why we need more women and girls in maths and science so people don't die. No pressure. Hi, my name is Sabrine. I am 10 years old and my question is, were there many girls studying your subjects at school? I went to an all-girls secondary school actually, so there were loads of girls that were doing my subjects. And then when I went to sixth form, uh, there weren't that many. So some of my exams, I was the only girl in those exams. And then when I ended up at university, out of 70 of us, there were three girls, but I never noticed. Didn't even realise at all until I started working and uh, had, went to this conference and had this moment. And then I looked back and I was like, yeah, it was me, Clarice and Karina, gosh. There were just three of us, but I had the time of my life, it was great. Hello, my name is Sarah and I am 10 years old. How does it make you feel doing a job that girls didn't used to be allowed to do? Oh, it makes me feel amazing. Um, and actually, it puts a little bit of pressure on me because, um, so I talk about dating Stephanie Shirley quite a lot and she was around in the 60s. And it was really cool because she did so much in, at a time when it was really hard to be a woman that had children and to work. And the size and the scale of what she did, which was getting so many women to like code their kitchen tables and post it in, in the 60s when you weren't even allowed to open your own bank account without your dad or your husband, I then feel like, oh my goodness, I'm not even living in the 60s and what have I done with my life? So yeah, that's how I feel about it. 
Hello, my name is Sienna and I'm 10 years old. My favourite subjects are maths and ICT. What advice do you have for girls like me? My advice for you is come along to a Mets event if you can on a half term or on a weekend, make the trip to wherever we are and come along. Uh, we have loads of free food, we have loads of fun, we'll have loads of music, you can come and play some cool ICT stuff and it won't be like a lesson and you'll really enjoy yourself so come along. I'll be there too probably. Thank you.